everybody, Walker Stalker, San Francisco, Xander Berkeley, plays one of the mayors in Walking Dead. However, 24, for me, was where he made his mark on me. He gave himself up in CTU for the radiation that was released. So I'm just so freaking blessed to interview you, man. How'd you get started in that? Well, yeah, uh, I grew up on a farm in New Jersey, and uh, there weren't other kids around. Uh, and I, my mom sewed, and I wanted costumes instead of toys. And <clears throat> it just it triggered my imagination to go off into the woods, dressed up as different characters, uh, Robin Hood, Dr. Doolittle, whatever it was. And I would just go off and play with the animals or <clears throat> whatever it was in my mind, not so much to perform as to transform into a different character. And I started doing artwork really young and then my father knew that I was into it so he got me the specialty of um, makeup effects like uh, nose putty and derma wax. And I started very early on transforming the way I looked. Mm -hmm. And I'd, do, I'd get friends to stage a fight scene with burnt cork and ketchup and breakaway sticks. And it was just something I was really into from really early on. And so then I got into experimental theater and, and classical training when I was still a teenager. Went to college, tried to get a good liberal arts education, but didn't end up wanting to spend all my parents' money on that expensive college stuff when I knew I was just gonna get into the business. So I went straight to New York after two years of college, started training at, at uh, uh, acting school there and dance and movement and vocal and all, all kinds of acting techniques and studied privately with a lot of people in New York and then got in a play that whisked me out to California when I was about 23. Had just turned 23. A very long time ago. And then Mommy Dearest was my first movie and I've been working pretty steady ever since. I mean, you played so many, these for me, iconic characters. I know it was 24. There was a Hulu TV series called The Booth. Tell us about that. I love that where you have to write in the book. I promise I write in the book and then you have to. The Booth at the End. Yes. And I think you can get it on Amazon now. Um, it was at the time Hulu's first web series and one of the first web series to sort of be taken seriously for something other than like an adult swim kind of comedy thing. Um, and it was a brilliant concept about a guy who sits at the back end of a booth and uh, at the, the back booth of a diner and people hear that he's capable of making things happen. And uh, you have to have a password to get to sit down next to him. And you tell him what it is you want. And he consults a book that he's made off with from somewhere. And he's somewhat normal and human and not in other ways. So you don't really know who it is you're dealing with. But he has the power to make what you want to have happen happen if you do the task that he assigns you. You don't have to do it, but if you want to have this happen, this is what you need to do. And you need to come back and report to him about the progress of this sometimes very unsavory task that he assigns you. And you don't know whether he's a, a god or a devil. You don't know what it is. It's a sort of fallen angel that's trying to take a compass on human morality. And the, the way they get the stories with each character that comes in to unfold and the way in which he tries to maintain a balance of not interfering with the course of human destiny and so he balances one character against another or the book does as the stories unfold you cannot believe that you've seen everything just in one location because everybody that sees it somehow but you cut away to that no it was all just from the incredibly invested storytelling that people come once they're caught up in this thing and there's no turning back because they've started to do it and they're telling him these stories and it's so and his effect on them is so brilliantly conceived and worked out and uh that was one of my favorite projects of all time too i enjoy the heck out of that but people want salem you were a warlock but people want to hear about Gregory, your role in <laughs> The Walking Dead with the Zandog. You want to know about the Zandog, don't you? I understand. Um, well, it was such a pleasure to work with, with Stephen. Uh, he and I just became, uh, we, we were bromancing from day one, and uh, they wrote such great dialogue for us 
uh, it, it was so organically invested that I was so concerned that he was going to uh, hurt me. And Gregory is one of the reasons why people don't know how to cope with Gregory is he's a little too real. He's he's not a hero. He's not a villain. He's somebody that is very involved with himself and his own self-interest, and uh, he's narcissistic, and he's, uh, he thinks he's funnier than he actually is, he thinks he's sexier than he actually is, and, uh, or he's, he's not very successful with the ladies, but it doesn't stop him from continuing to say inappropriate things to them, and there's a lot of guys out there that are like that. And, I don't think any of them want to think of themselves as that. And they haven't really ever had to get in a fist fight because they've got a, a position of power at work and that they use that to manipulate people and they use it to get people. And they think because people laugh at their jokes or because people do what they want them to do because they don't want to get fired, that they're all that. But when the shit goes down and the apocalypse is on, heads will roll and then suddenly they're just these big fat scaredy cats at the end of the day that are going to scamper and scurry to do whatever they have to you want me to kneel okay what's a big deal why why is kneeling such a big deal okay really what why do you want me to kneel you know yeah we kind of saw that when the zombie got on you yeah and the zombie thing i mean they're disgusting i wasn't scared i just grossed out well one last thing before we go i've i've watched the fans come up and you just like, they're just so happy to meet you in the flesh. How does that make you feel to just have them be so happy? Well, it, it's, it's super sweet and people that travel the distance, I, I, I keep telling them it's, for me, I don't have the lines rolling up around the block because people don't necessarily want a picture of the douche waffle from The Walking Dead unless they're gonna throw darts at it. But there, I, I'm happy, especially today, that there's a lot of uh, fans of other things that I've been in and that remember things like 24 yeah. and they've met an impression and uh, that they know and can distinguish me from the character and that they aren't just coming up going why are you so mean to Maggie uh, I don't write this shit <laughs> I love that Okay, by Xander Berkeley, everybody. See him in The Walking Dead, but this has been a freaking joy for me. I was going to say, 24 is when I first saw him. And I, I will say that just to have been in two of the greatest series, I used to be a movie snob, and I wouldn't do TV series. I didn't, I wouldn't take it on because I didn't want anybody to identify me with just one character. And I would change, I'd sabotage fame, but I would change the way I looked and everything I did So, because I secretly just wanted the audience to believe I was that character. When they were watching the movie, I just wanted to help them shoehorn into that reality. And, uh, and so TV series scared me because then the p people would have me pegged as who I was. And they'd be thinking about me instead of the character or the story. And so I tried to stay out of TV. But then I, 24 is where I met my wife who played Nina Myers, Sarah Clark. She's a brilliant actor and wonderful human being, the mother of my two beautiful children. And... Everything changed for me then. I started doing TV. You can get a little bit more of a normal life. You're not traveling all over the world all the time. And, uh, and to be involved in two series like 24 and The Walking Dead that are zeitgeist phenomenas that yeah. resonate with people on such a deep, bingeable level, uh, is, I feel so grateful. Happy Easter.